Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Nelson and uh, we have this special Veterans Day interview. Joining us now from Afghanistan is Father Paul Hurley, an Army chaplain who is a priest of the Archdiocese of Boston. He was ordained in 1995. Also, I understand a fourth degree knight. Thanks so much for being with us, Father Paul. Sure, glad to be here. Uh, now, if you, if you could tell us a little bit about uh, your position, your role. I understand you have a, a, a bit of a dual role of overseeing all the chaplains and, and serving at headquarters. Could you tell us what that's like? So over here we have, um, you know, a number of units, and all the units have chaplains, of course. And uh, I happen to be in the organization that's the senior headquarters here, so I'm the senior chaplain. Okay. And I basically oversee, you know, all the other chaplains that are in theater. So I make sure they have what they need, um, you know, help them work through any issues that they might have. Uh, I just try and uh, basically help them do what they're here to do. That's that's primarily my responsibility as the uh, senior chaplain. I'm also the senior priest, of course, and um, you know that that's that has its own challenges. Trying to make sure the Catholic um, coverage is is adequate and and the, you know the priests are able to get around to where they need to go. So um, I guess that's a little bit of what you know what I do over here in a in a general way. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you have, um, I, I don't know if there's a typical day for you, but what would a typical day be like for you in, in, in your responsibilities? Um, well, you know, it usually starts off with some, some uh, PT in the morning, and um, there's always a meeting to go to or, or something, uh, especially the way things are running now with the retrograde operation. You know, we're trying to, we're trying to move out of Afghanistan. Um, then generally I have daily mass, and in the afternoon I'll usually connect up with folks um, out in the field that, you know, they might have some uh, requirements or some needs that I can help them with. And um, a lot of what I do too is, is, is a lot of coordination with uh, folks in the rear, folks back in the States. Okay. So with the time difference, you know, I end up doing a lot of... Uh, Telephone calls, uh, usually in the late afternoon, evening. Um, so that's a day, more or less, when I'm here. Yeah. There's a lot of yeah. days that I'm traveling as well, so I go out and, and help do some of the Catholic coverage. I help, uh, well, I go out and visit a lot of the chaplains, see how they're doing, things like that. So, um, you know, I, I do a lot of traveling, but I'm also here uh, at the headquarters quite a bit as well. Sure, sure. Uh, maybe if you could talk to us a, a little bit about some of the needs and the, and the challenges um, that the troops face uh, overseas, and especially in a, a situation like Afghanistan. Well, you know, I've been on a number of deployments, and this, they're all kind of a little different. This is, this is a little unique because we have um, less of a, um, you know, direct role as far as the combat operation. So um, there is less kinetic activity. There's less uh, dealing less with casualties and death and, and uh, things like that. Um, this, this deployment, of course, is um, in some ways similar to other deployments in that whenever you have people separated from their families and their loved ones, you know, there's a lot that needs to uh, be processed with that. There's things that go on at home. People here can't, you know, they feel they can't help. So there's a lot of tensions and anxieties that go with that. Um, there's a lot of ambiguities that go on with some of the uh, business that we, that we uh, the soldiers are involved in here. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of stressors, a lot of different types of stress, but, you know, generally helping people deal with whatever situation they're in, you know. Uh, the other part of it is we've been doing this for a while, so there's a lot of accumulative effects of, of these deployments on families. You know, yeah. it's one thing to go on a deployment and, and you come back after a year and you reintegrate and try and begin to work through things and, um, and then to have additional deployments built up on top of that. You know, it adds, it's a cumulative effect. So, you know, a lot of what we deal with or help people deal with um, is, 
is stuff that has been accumulating for a while. Yeah. Um, the other big thing over here that I, on this particular deployment that I've been focused on is, is taking care of the chaplains themselves, because again, we've been doing this for a number of years. And the chaplains, of course, are always the one uh, helping people deal with their crisis or whatever. So uh, taking care of chaplains is also a big element of what, what I'm focused on over here. And um, if you could maybe um, talk about the importance, you touched on it a little bit, but to, to have the presence um, of a chaplain, um, you know, I, I know there's a need for it, but to, not, not just for Catholics, but of all faiths as well, to have somebody there to be able to talk to, uh, you know, s troops in harm's way and who are dealing with, uh, as you said, too, being away from, you know, uh, their families and friends for so long. Well, you know, I'll, I'll put it in terms of, of uh, the way the soldiers speak about it. <laughs> so they refer to this as, as the chaplain bubble. So they like to be in the chaplain bubble. You see, it's good. It's always comforting. It's always uh, uplifting, in a sense, to know that, hey, that chaplain's there. And we know. I mean, it's it's not about the chaplain, but it's, it's what we remind people of, um, that we bring, you know, in that context, but that's how a lot of these guys describe it. You know, it's it's the ch they like the chaplain bubble. They like to be in the chaplain bubble, uh, and if they don't have the chaplain bubble, they they want to they want to get it. Yeah. So, you know, we um, you know we we do the best we can as far as being with folks. You know, as much as we can. And, and I I would um, th think too in terms of. This, uh, a soldier's faith too and how important that I is to them especially you know when they find themselves uh, away and, and uh, like I said in harm's way and how how does faith or what have you seen um, in terms of faith with with some of the people that you've dealt with and how that's to sort of sustain them through difficult situations well you know I think a lot of people come to realize uh, when they when they're away when they're when they don't have that support system that they're used to at home, whether it's family, friends, or whatever. Um, you know, the church, uh, worship services, coming to Mass, or other services, whatever denomination they may be, um, people, that gives people that opportunity to uh, not only connect with others, but to connect with their faith. And, and they, in a lot of ways, they discover or get reacquainted with what, what with what's really important for them, mm. and that is their faith. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is a it is a huge part of, of people's lives here. And what's it been like what's for you living so far away from home? And uh, maybe if you could talk about too some of the difficulties that you m must face in your ministry uh, as well uh, in these sort of rural uh, situations. Well, you know, it's interesting you bring that up because I was just I was just talking to. A, a brother priest here the other day, and I, I, we were on the phone, and I said, hey, when was the last time you, you know, you saw another priest? <laughs> yeah. And he was, you know, he was kind of counting the weeks, and then he, it turned into months. Wow. And we, you know, we had a discussion about, hey, you know, this is something that we, we can't allow, you know, we can't, we have to fix that. We have to um, uh, have that type of uh, priestly fellowship. And I bring it up just because that is that is a challenge for me, and that's something that that I feel um, on this on this end, particularly in this deployment, because we have less cha less Catholic chaplains, especially here. Um, so it's more challenging to uh, to have some fellowship with another priest, uh, to be able to uh, have mass together, uh, celebrate the sacraments. I think, you know, that's one of the biggest challenges uh, that I face uh, here in this deployment. Well, we thank you so much for uh, being with us today, um, and we wish you all the best and uh, hope uh, in, in the future, too, for, for your ministry, which is such an important part uh, of people being away so far away from their homes. Uh, um, so we are doing a great service, and thank you for that. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, it's a privilege, really. 
Thanks. Thanks again for joining us, Father Paul. And we want to thank everyone as well for joining us on this uh, special interview during this uh, Veterans Day week. And we wish you all the best as well here on Catholic TV.